Hello and welcome back to the channel show as it's going to be a bit of a play around with a mod from 17 which I actually played around with quite a lot in 15 and then this is my actual conversion of it um, for 17 using the M company script and what I want to do here is have a look at actually converting it again into 19 but now using the global company script uh, so this is the idea behind the video um, we'll see where it ends up might all be a complete shambles but uh, whatever um, I've actually got the zipped version of this and there's a reason behind that because when we use the giant editor to help us in the conversion process it must be in its zipped formed it cannot be unzipped so just bear that in mind um, this potentially will save me a little bit of time in the conversion process it's going to convert what it can for me automatically and then I need to just kind of rejiggle some stuff around manually later on to join all the parts together so I'm going to open up the giant server this is 810 for farm sim 19 and I'm going to go file open mod on the desktop here we'll double click on the potato washer what I'm going to do here is just rename this to fs19 potato washer placeable so this is the actual working directory that it's going to create um, to put all the parts in because it now needs to unzip it so that it can actually work with all the in the parts within but you need the ver the version original version to be zipped up for the actual giant set to understand what the hell is going on with it so we're going to click ok and it's going to do all its thing it's going to give us a pop up and say that it's going to convert the mod so it's found mod files from an older version of farming simulator and it's going to upgrade these files using the cloud service and we want to go yes again it's going to give us a another directory this is our converted directory so again you can rename this if you so choose to i'm going to keep it as it is at the default fs19 potato washer placeable converted so we're going to click ok it will do all the bits and pieces it needs to do in the background and we're going to get this as our output this is a report that uh, the actual cloud converter has processed and given to us so you can have a look through all of this stuff it's going to give you some warnings for certain things like XMLs that are no longer uh, relevant for 19 um, scripts and various other different things like that, Lua scripts. Again, with XMLs, there's no template for a potato washer um, as far as giants are concerned, so it doesn't know what that is. So it's going to give us a warning for that. There are some parts here which were successful. Uh, it's updated the shaders or the paths to the shaders um, that 19 uses. But just an updated version so whatever shaders are in 19 that were in 17 um, it will try to then rejig other paths to point to the later versions but there are some um, which are no longer used like the scroll uv shader that is not a script that's used anymore uh, sorry not a script an xml a shader xml it's not used anymore so that is now obsolete so it doesn't know what to do with it so it's just going to say it's copied it without any changes um, and then we've got again scripts, lower scripts, doesn't know what those are, so <clears throat> it's going to just copy it without any changes. Again, things like mod desk, those need to be updated manually, doesn't know what it is, and various other different things. So you can have a look through all of that. Um, but just bear in mind, because it says, just because it says it was successful, doesn't necessarily mean that it's used the right shader. Sometimes I've found when it does this, it will try to update to whatever version of the later you know like let's say vehicle shader for example it will try and use the a shader that uh, matches that one again the vehicle shader but what we'll look at later on is that uh, that might not necessarily be the shader that we want to use um, because 19 comes with some support shaders it will opt to use that one instead of using the actual full-blown updated version for 19 so again we'll have a look at that later on uh, so if i click close i don't need to save that and we have a list here for store items you can go through all of this stuff but uh, just bear in mind what you click on might not be what you actually want to get out of it because the whole idea of this is to actually create the potato washer i'm not looking at creating single particles so i'm going to click on the first one here the store item of um potato washer because these, as you can see, are additionals. These are parts that are additional I3Ds to work with particle systems and things that will spawn, like the pallets and whatever else. 
So what we want to look at here is our actual store items. I have a sell point uh, in this particular version of the mod, so it's recognized that and put that in as a store, or store item as well. But again, I don't need to work with the sell point because I'm going to need to create an entirely new one anyway for that. Um, because it works a little bit differently again from 17 to 19 so we're going to need to create a new cell point anyway so it may have done uh, a half decent job of converting it over but uh, i would prefer to create something like a cell point from scratch manually anyway um, but as far as the potato washer goes again like i said before this process is going to save me a little bit of time by doing some of it for me so i'm going to click on the potato washer store item here we'll click ok and we then get our potato washer well for the most part anyway everything is there but we just can't see it all as of yet so if we have a look you can see there's quite a lot of parts there which would appear to be missing and we do have obviously quite a considerable amount of errors in the console here because there are some things that again don't work the same way as they did in 17 we have some vertex <clears throat> attributes which cannot be applied to that particular material uh, some performance problems with wav files uh, which is a bit of a contradiction of terms here because um, you cannot load a file, as far as I know, into the editor in any other format than WAV. But the game actually requires an OGG file. <laughs> so it's a little bit, yeah, one of those. So you have to kind of work with WAV files in the editor, but then convert it to an OGG for the game to actually understand what it is. Or at least give you no warnings it will still work but it's going to give you warnings to say that it's got a performance problem so it is recommended to convert them into OGGs but WAV files will work um, but I don't particularly like warnings and errors in anything I do so again we'll look at that a bit later on and try and get around that and we'll look at actually converting whatever we need to convert into OGG files uh, we've also got some warnings to do with reflection maps those are no longer used in 19 they're obsolete so again we'll need to work with those um, and we have some out of date shaders again because the conversion process didn't recognize what the mesh rotate shader is because it doesn't exist in 19 it's copied it over or theoretically copied it over as it was before so we need to either use a different shader or try and convert this one to version 4 from version 3 so that it will work with 19 uh, one word of warning if you plan on doing anything to do with any kind of mod that uh, does work with obsolete shaders and then put it on the mod hub it more than likely will fail because they are unsupported shaders so it will come back and say it's a custom shader get out um, as far as i know that might be only for console uh, but then global company doesn't work on console anyway so as far as pc mods go it might be acceptable i can't say for sure on that but just be aware of it if you're going to use shaders that are not natively supported by 19 you might have some problems with the mod hub uh, but then i wouldn't recommend to convert somebody else's work and upload it to the mod hub anyway this is just for me um, as a personal mod that i really enjoy playing in 15 and 17 and i wanted to convert it to 19 i'm just giving you some in, in you know information on what can be done possibly if this works which it may not um to convert older mods from previous versions of the game up to global company and then how to join all those parts together so if we go through here yeah we've got a lot of uh, reflection maps which we're going to need to sort out um and again it's given us the shader errors there <clears throat> all of these parts look okay so yeah there is a little bit there we still need to work through manually um, but that's okay we can do that that's not a big deal theoretically um, so if we actually go through all of these parts if I click on the main cube here the uh, main setup you'll see that there are lots of different parts uh, and you what is invisible here then suddenly becomes visible um, and this is all to do with shaders this is because the shaders that are controlling these parts again are obsolete and no longer supported by um, 19 uh, the editor knows that so it's saying well you've got a problem here you need to fix it so we can do a couple things we can either replace the shader with something that is compatible with 19 or we can try and convert the shader from 17 to 19 
Now for me, in this particular instance, the easiest way is to actually convert the shader from 17 and then convert it over to work with 19. But again, as I said before, that might not be necessarily uh, acceptable by Giants if you decide to make a mod um, using these out of date shaders, it might get rejected. Just be aware of that. So what we're going to do is have a look through all these parts and see what we've got. Um, so these parts here, I think for the most part should be intact, but we potentially will have to um, rejig or some parts here later on because of the way the actual scene graph structure needs to be set up. Uh, but uh, have a look through these. So we've got some parts here, uh, water plane. We have a look in this. Is, so open up your material editing window and have a look what's in here. And then under your custom shader, you need to identify what shader is actually being used. So this particular one here, the stream shader, that is a shader that is still in use by 19. So the conversion process in the editor here has just updated the shader source for the later version. Um, and again, this one here. Yeah, so this one, if you look at this one, decal underscore water, which is this <clears throat> icon here or decal or whatever you want to call it, the system has recognized what shader it was using and updated it to a support shader which is available in the 19 structure we don't really want to use that because again um, it's a support shader it's not really designed to be used it's just there to actually work with things in the editor um, and then ideally you want to either try and use a shader that is compatible fully compatible with 19 or um, replace this decal with something that will work with a shader from 19. So for things like this, what I would recommend to do, what I've done in the past, is to use the vehicle shader from 19, um, but then change some attributes here that are going to make it work. So I'll try and show you what I mean here real quick. If I actually change this one over, so you can see here that this is support shader for FS17 vehicle shader XML. We, again, I don't, I don't recommend to use that one. Um, so I'm going to click on the open or change shader. I'm going to go to my game installation for Farm Sim 19 data shaders. And if I scroll to the bottom here and go to vehicle shader and double click on that, you can see it's gone completely black. Uh, and the reason for that is because the way that this particular decal was made originally, um, <clears throat> it's using the gloss map to apply the dirt. Um, and you can see all of this blue in the background, all this speckledy stuff that's now being used to create the dirt over this particular decal. So it's covered it in dirt. That's what it's done. And I can show you what I mean by that. If I take the um, attribute here for the dirt, if I change this to zero, all the dirt goes away. But now we've got this big glossy kind of effect to it. It doesn't look right. It's all gone shiny, shiny. So what we need to do there is also change this value to zero. And now we actually get what we really want. So what I would recommend here is to have a play around with this value to get some dirt on it, um, but not the full dirt. So if I put it back to one, that's full dirt. So if I then change this to maybe 0 0.4, something like that, you can see now it has some dirt on it, but you can still clearly see the actual decal. So it's just trying to work with um, things that were made specifically for a type of shader that again is obsolete and it's just updating it to work with the later version of the shader for 19 and then adapting some of the attributes to give us what we want out of it. Um, so there's nothing too fancy about that, um, but it's just a case of time really. It's just messing around with different attributes again to get what you want out of it. So what we're going to do then is if I have a look through all of these, we probably have more. So this one here, if we look at this one, you'll probably see that this one will be the same. Um, but because I've already changed the shader for that decal, this particular decal shares the same material ID. So if we look at the material up here, you can see that that one and that one are the same. So by changing one, it's automatically updated this one to the later shader as well. And all of my attributes here, my values for the dirt 
has also been changed um, because I updated that one. So, you know, that's a good thing in my opinion, just saves me a little bit of time. But there is one downside to it. What might work for one decal might not necessarily work for the other one. So you might end up having to compromise between the two of them because whatever value I set that one to looks really good. But then I could come over to this one and it'll have either no dirt or lots of dirt on it. Again, depending on how it was originally set up to work with all of the uh, texture maps. So there's good sides and bad sides to it all, I guess. So just be a little bit aware of that as well. But in this particular case, it's come out okay. So we can move on from this. So if we continue on going through all of this stuff. We've got a pallet spawner. This again will have to be replaced with the system for global company. But again, that's okay. We can work with that. So we'll have a look at this. And we've got some other parts here to do with keeps and whatever else. Um, <clears throat> so. Yeah, we might have to maybe work with some of these parts as well later on. Um, that's okay. Yeah, see this one again is using the FS17 vehicle shader, the support shader from 17. So again, I don't particularly want to use that one. Um, just out of curiosity, um, I haven't actually gone through all of this yet. If I click on this one, this is using the support shader from 17 as well. So we need to kind of work through all of this. I would really like to make it more compatible with 19. I would prefer not to use the support shaders if I possibly can get away with actually updating it to the ver you know the later version, the 19 version. Um, that's not always going to work, but uh, you know I'd like to try that. So let's see what we get then. If I go through these, um, I do this one, I think, because that's a much smaller part. Now, again, because some things will share the same material IDs, you might find that by changing this one, it will also change this one. Because if we look at that, they again both share the same material material ID. So it won't really matter which one I change, it's going to change them both. So what we'll do then is if we again go to the shaders folder for Farm Sim 19. And we'll go down to vehicle shader and as you can see everything is now black and the silver part on there um, because we're using the vehicle shader that is um, mimicking the damage done to it but uh, that won't really take effect in in game um, as a placeable um, it's just the way that the system's working so what we will do here is change that one to zero and then this one here again I'm going to change to 0 0.4 again you can play around with these values so we have a little bit of dirt here and there but uh, only in the areas that we really want it to be you might want to up that lower it whatever else so again it's just working with the different values here to get what you want out of it so that might kind of work 0 0.6 maybe something like that um, that could possibly work yeah, that doesn't look too bad, I guess. Might need to, again, mess about with that and adjust it as you see fit or whatever you want to get out of it. But that, to me, is not too bad. That's okay. Um, as far as the actual damage or whatever you want to call it, you might want to perhaps maybe add a little bit of that to it. So go 0 0.2, something like that. Let's see what we get from that. Not really a lot. I don't know. See, some of these values... They are either 0 or 1, so 1 would be that. <clears throat> so we could go 0 0.5 maybe. Uh, let's do 0 0.3, 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.25. Yeah, so you can see there that that's not quite so fine. It's either kind of on or off. So again, you have to be a little bit careful on how that kind of works. So 0 0.22, 0 0.23, something like that. Again, it looks really nasty. It's all blocky and horrible. So for me, in this particular instance, I would remove that completely. I would just set that to zero. It's not really needed, in my opinion. Um, it's just the fact that this entire mod is based around the vehicle shader, um, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it just means that there will be some differences in the actual process of how the shaders work from 17 to 19. 
and you'll just again need to work with the attributes here and change them accordingly to work for you so uh, i think this would probably work for me i might perhaps maybe knock that down just a little bit go to 0 0.5 just so it's not quite so blocky um and uh, i mean the better way to do this would be to completely retexture the whole thing um you know if you're going to use the vehicle shader then potentially you want, might want to go down the road of udim um, and completely redo the whole thing but that would then require it going into blender and being remapped and all sorts of things so i don't really want to go down that road if i can help it so as far as this goes you have to kind of just take it into effect that these textures for the most part are going to be from 15 um because as far as i'm aware this was not ever redone for 17 from scratch it was just converted from 15 to 17 and again now to 19 so the textures are going to be um you know older textures let's say they're going to be um not up to date i guess <clears throat> but again you know it is what it is um i may at some point do a complete conversion of this um, and then put it into UDIM but uh, for now I'm just going to go with what I've got and work with that so if we continue on through then um, <clears throat> so if we actually look at what we've got so we've got some work animations so what, again what we want to do here is have a look and see what needs to be changed to update all of this stuff the particle systems we'll get to later on because they are loaded in differently now um, with the global company system uh, that's done through the xml so um, whereas in 17 and 15 all of these were done through um, user attributes so if i actually open up this um, the user attributes window you can see we have different attributes for how the particle systems are all loaded in and how all of that sort of stuff works uh, and that's not done anymore so you can see here we had the particle system file name all done by user attributes that's not the same anymore as far as global company works it's done through the xml directly for the mod itself so that will have to be completely redone um, but again that's something we get to later on the animations um, <clears throat> not quite sure what we've got here for animations let's have a look oh we've got uh, some parts here this might be something to do with the display here not quite sure on that static light backlight display okay so we've got some parts here might have to do that a little bit differently again not quite sure on that okay i think there's uh actually backlights corona main Beacon light corona bell, uh, corona shape does not have required vertex for material beacon light corona map okay so that might have to be potentially redone um, that is using the emissive light shader so again that might be something that we need to look at a bit later on beacon light corona diffuse we'll get back to that um, later on and just see what that's all about might have to work with something different um i'm pretty sure that we have access to different coronas so you know, what have we got here so we've got an emissive and yeah okay don't know if that's uh, we'll have a look at that and see what that's all about later on that's going to be a bit more a bit more work again the sounds these will be loaded in maybe differently uh, with global company i might uh, have a look at that later on and just see what that's all about um yeah we might do that differently i'm not sure yet there are some different shaders for our <clears throat> belts and <clears throat> all the rotate parts so if we click on the main transform group here you can see all the parts here and again like i said before these are all invisible at the moment because they're using the incorrect shader or an obsolete shader so what we need to do is, um, like I said before, again, I'm going to continue to work with the mesh ro rotate sh shader, which is what this is all set up to work on, but I'm going to convert it to work for 19. So what I'm going to do is in the converted folder here, we have a folder called shaders. Again, there's nothing in there at the moment. Uh, but what I'm going to do is if I go to 
the original version, which I have unzipped, um, which is why I unzipped it. <clears throat> we have some different shaders here. So if I go into here and look for mesh rotate shader. So we want this one. So I'm going to copy this one here and put that into the shaders folder like so. And then I'm going to open this in Notepad++. Really straightforward. All we need to do here is change the version number from three to four. That's it. Don't need to change anything else. I'm going to go ahead and save that, close it all down, go back into the giant editor, and I will we'll work through all of these. So this one here uses the scroll UV shader, which is obsolete. I'm going to do that a little bit differently. So we'll skip the belts and we'll go to this part, the actual tumbler part, and we're going to click on that. As you can see here, this uses the mesh rotate shader. So I don't want, I can't use the original version. So I'm going to click on the add or replace shader, go to my desktop, and then we'll go into the converted folder here, shaders, and we're going to double click on the updated mesh rotate shader. Um, and you can see straight away, oh dear, <laughs> it's all gone, beat dong, rotating in the wrong direction. So what we need to do here is come into our rotation speed attribute, change the one to a zero and put the one in there instead because this is X, Y, Z rotation. And then the last one here is the speed that it rotates at. Um, again, because of the way 17 and 19 was set up, um, <clears throat> axes are slightly different. They've changed a little bit. Uh, so what would, would have worked on the Y rotation in 17 and 15 now has to work on the X rotation in 19. But we can see here clearly Hopefully you can see that clearly. This is now rotating in the right direction. So that should work for me. Okay. Uh, the next part that we need to do, and again, because some of these parts will share the same material ID, uh, when you apply it to one, it might apply it to all of the others. So some things will magically appear, even though you haven't clicked on them. It's because they're all set up to work in the same with the same um, material ID or, or whatever else. So we'll continue on. So if we go to the next part, you can see this one here again. <clears throat> Let's have a look what we got here. So this is using the old version. So again, we can click on here, add or replace, and I'm gonna double click on the updated version. And again, you can see this is now rotating in the wrong direction. And to make it do this, I'm just holding my Alt, left Alt key down and it will then do this. You can also click play, but because there are sound files in all of this, if I click play, it will be really, really loud. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to click alt and you can then see any shaders that will work in the editor. Some will, some won't. You can see it's rotating in the wrong direction. So again, we put a one in here and we take the zero, the one out of there and replace it with a zero. And I hold alt and you can see now it's rotating in the right direction again, same direction as the drum. Fantastic. Now, if you wanted it to rotate in the opposite direction, for example, uh, what we could do here is to actually put a negative. So I could go minus one. And now, in theory, if it works the way I think it's going to work, that should rotate in the right uh, opposite direction. Now, I can't remember. Um, if I go back to this one. There were some which did work like that and some that didn't work like that. So let's have a look and see. Nope, that's still rotating the right same direction, I think. Okay. So perhaps you can't do that for this particular one. I don't know. Let's do one. Mm, that definitely changed something. I'm sure of it. Minus one. Ah, I see. Okay. So what that's done, I think, is not actually changed the rotation. It's inverted the actual whole mesh by the looks of things. As you can see the difference in the color of it, I think. Anyway, we will we won't go down that road. It's going to get to. Uh, let's change that back to one. There we go. Yeah. So I don't know what it might work a little bit differently. It's actually inverting the whole thing, but we don't want that. We want it to be the same. So yeah, ignore what I just said there. I just wanted to test it out. Um, but it doesn't look like you can actually set it to do that. Unless pretty sure this one is. Let's do minus one. Hmm. Don't know if that actually got faster. 
on this one. Let's do oh this one's still set to one. We want to change that back to one. One minus one. Let's do minus one on that one. Minus one. Oh there we go. I changed the wrong attribute. It's the speed attribute that you need to change the actual um setting for speed. So if you do want it to go in the wrong other direction then you need to change this one here. I knew there was one attribute here that you could change that made it rotate in a different direction. I just couldn't remember which one it was. Uh, so these are your X, Y, Z attributes. Um, and then this one here is your speed. So by changing it to a minus number, it will rotate in the opposite direction. Yeah, okay, so that makes sense now. So you can actually get it to rotate whichever direction you want it to, to rotate in. Depends on your preference, I guess, um, counterclockwise or clockwise, up to you entirely. But that is how you set that up, as far as the mesh rotate shader, shader goes anyway. So I think I'm actually going to leave it like that. I think I like it rotating that way instead. So we'll leave it like that. That's fine. Uh, so if we continue on down then, this one here, yeah, because that shares the same as this one more than likely, it's automatically updated it. So that's fine. And then I'll get, again, our rollers. So this one is using the old version, so we're going to go to the new version. Um, and you can see now that the they're actually floating around, they're, they're spinning on the incorrect axes. Uh, again, so we, what we want to do here is change that one to a zero, this one to a one, and this one to a minus one, so that they all rotate in the right direction, um, how they're going to set up. Hopefully that will make sense. If it, if it doesn't, just leave them on standards, leave it on one and just go with that. But I tend to want to have things work the way I want them to work, so I can't help myself but play around with numbers. Um, and again, this one will automatically follow suit because it shares the same setup. So that is now that part done, and it's rotating how I want it to rotate, and that's 30 minutes. So what I'm going to do is we'll end this one here. So this will be part one of converting the potato washer from 17 to 15 to 19. Um, again, just bear in mind that this is my version, um, as in the version that I converted from 15 to 17. Um, yours may differ slightly, but for the again, for the most part, things that you will see here should match up pretty much the same, uh, because this has to be structured in a certain fashion for it all to work. But there might, might be some parts when we get into looking at the particle systems and things like that, that may not match in directly with what you've got. Um, but hopefully, again, like all my things, it will give you a direction to go in. Um, so we'll continue this in part two. And we'll have a look at other parts and how to get them to show up and what adaptions we need to make to get it to work with 19. I'm Shell Wizard. Thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.